whenever we can avoid forcing ourselves to memorize something or at least having a backup method to questions where we otherwise might have to memorize some fact it's always useful so go ahead try this question okay so there's the real way to do this question what they really want you to do and there's a way to do it where you can basically brute force the problem with your calculator and i'm going to show you both i'll show you the real way first so you can see how long and kind of annoying it is and then show you the brute force way which saves you a lot of steps and saves you a lot of heartache so let's try, let's try this one out. So we know that the cosine of theta equals two-thirds, and we want to know the sine of two theta. Well, if you recall, this is where the memorization comes in a little bit. You'd have to remember that, okay, sine of two theta, that's the same thing as two sine of theta cos of theta. So we already have this, of course, cosine of theta. That's just two-thirds. But we don't have sine of theta yet, so we need to find the sine of theta. So what we can do is create a little right triangle here. Imagine that this is theta. If this is theta by Sokotoa, the cosine of theta would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And since the cosine of theta equals two thirds, we know that the adjacent must be two and the hypotenuse must be three because this is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now we can find out this leg by doing Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus, we'll call this y. y squared equals 3 squared. So 4 plus y equals 9. 4 plus y squared equals 9. So y would equal, when you figure this all out, square root of 5. So this is square root of 5. Okay, now the sine of theta would be, according to Sokotoa, opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of theta in this case would be square root of 5 over 3. And now finally, we've got all the ingredients, so we can go ahead and go back to sine of 2 theta. That's going to be equal to 2 times the sine of theta, which is square root of 5 over 3, times the cosine of theta, which is 2 over 3. And now we'll get out our calculator and figure this out. So it's 2 times square root of 5 times 2 divided by 3 divided by 3, so divided by 9, once you put that all together. So we do all this work, and we finally get 0.99, which is choice C. So that's the real way. Do we need to do it the real way? Well, you could, and it does review a number of important concepts that you might need in other parts of the math subject tests. But there's a much faster and less memory-intensive way and less work-intensive way to do it. And it looks like this. So we know that the cosine of theta is 2 thirds. So I can do the inverse cosine of theta and get, or I should say the inverse cosine of two-thirds, and get theta. So let's do that. And at, for this problem, it doesn't matter if you're in radians or degrees, but it's just one thing you'd want to make sure if the problem is giving you, for example, a domain in degrees that you're in degrees, just to be consistent, but it's fine. So we do this, and we get that theta, after we inverse cosine two-thirds, it's going to be 48 degrees. Well, if theta is 48 degrees, let's just do the sine of 2 times 48 degrees. So the sine of 2 times the answer we got previously gets us the exact same answer, 0 0.99. That took us about 5 seconds. So not only does this save you time, it also makes you not have to memorize the double angle formula. Now, it's good to have the double angle formula memorized. I mean, it's not that hard, and there are some double angle formulas for cosine as well, in addition to some other little trig identities you'd want to know. But frankly, if we, if we can do it this way, it's faster, and it's a nice backup method as well. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com slash enroll, and you can find the link in the description below the video.